Blockchains hold the potential to completely change the internet as we know it. But if we're going to reach mass adoption of blockchain technology, then we must solve one of the most notorious issues that plagues all blockchains, and that's scalability. See, one of the biggest complaints about blockchains like Ethereum is that it's too slow for widespread adoption. And we see many alternative layer one blockchains come onto the scene to try to fix this, like Solana, Aptos, Sui, Binance Smart Chain, Avalanche, and so many more. And in this video, I want to talk about yet another alternative layer one blockchain coming onto the scene that claims to be the fastest layer one blockchain in the entire world, even two times faster than Solana. It started to make a big buzz inside the crypto space, and it's presented a lot of insane opportunities popping up, including some for developers, which I'll talk about in this video. So I'm gonna tell you everything you need to understand in this video today as a blockchain developer myself who works this technology on a daily basis. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you wanna capitalize on the massive crypto explosion that's heating up right now, then I can show you how to become a blockchain master step-by-step -step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's get into this. Let's talk about this new layer one blockchain that claims to be the fastest on the planet. So what is it? Well, it's the Say blockchain. So it is an alternative layer one, which basically means it's its own distinct blockchain completely separate from something like Ethereum, Solana, Binance Smart Chain, or anything like that. Okay, it's got its own native gas token, uh, its own cryptocurrency called the Say token, which at the time of recording this video, in the last 90 days, it's almost 10 x in price off the lows. It's a project with some impressive backers like Coinbase, Jump, Multicoin Capital, Delphi Digital, and so many more. And they literally describe themselves on their website as the fastest layer one blockchain designed to scale the industry so that they can enable mass adoption of digital assets. So a quick overview of the stats that are reported here on the website are that it processes 20,000 uh, transactions per second. They call it orders per second. We'll see why in a minute. Uh, with 380 millisecond transaction finality, okay? And if you compare that with other blockchains, like you see in this table down here, uh, you know, they're 20,000 transactions per second versus Solana's 10,000 transactions per second. So that's twice as fast. And again, I believe this is with the original Solana client here. So transaction finality, 380 milliseconds versus Solana's two and a half seconds. And if you compare that to a layer one Ethereum, not including layer twos, I'll talk about layer twos here in a minute, uh, roughly 20 transactions per second on Ethereum and six minute transaction finality. So a massive advertised scalability benefit. So let's dig into each of these things one by one and kind of talk about how this works. So let's start off with the whole idea of scalability. Because like I said at the beginning of this video, one of blockchain's biggest problems is that they're kind of slow, okay? And we actually have to fix this in order for blockchains to be ready for prime time. We want a blockchain that supports a high number of users doing lots of things all at the same time. So this really comes down to transactions per second and then also uh, transaction finality. So what is that? Well, basically, transactions per second is if you have all these transactions coming at the same time, how many can it actually process in a one second window? And then transaction finality is when you have that batch, how long does it actually take for each one to be permanently recorded on chain? And so these are the two big variables that essentially form a bottleneck, okay, for scaling blockchains. And that's one of the reasons you hear that, you know, Ethereum, you hear the complaint that it's too slow for everyday people to use. Okay, that's because it has a relatively low number of transactions per second and a relatively long block time, which affects the transaction finality. It takes a long time for the transactions to get included into a block. Now, I, that's a feature, not a bug in terms of Ethereum. And, you know, Ethereum's long-term roadmap is scaling with layer twos. I'm not going to get into that in depth in this video. I've got plenty of videos on my channel talking about that. But that's why you have all these other alternative layer ones like Solana, Binance Smart Chain, Avalanche, Monad, uh, now Say coming onto the scene to implement different ways to try to increase uh, the throughput of the blockchains to improve the transactions per second and also the transaction finality. And they all take a slightly different approach to scaling. And so let's take a look at exactly how Say plans to do that. So one of the biggest ways is with this part right here on their features table, uh, it says processing style parallelized. Okay, you can see that compared to like, you know, Solana's parallelized, but Ethereum and Bitcoin are also sequential. So what does that mean? Well, let's talk about parallel uh, processing in computer science. This is a really basic term. You don't really have to be a computer science you know, wizard to understand this. But basically, uh, with blockchains like Ethereum, they process one transaction at a time. So if I'm going to send cryptocurrency from my account to yours, and then somebody else is going to send a cryptocurrency to somebody else's account, 
okay? It's gonna process mine first and then theirs, okay? If they submitted their transaction after me or paid a lower gas fee. So said another way, if I'm trading a token on a DEX and I make my trade, someone else has to go behind me if they didn't pay a higher gas fee or they did it after. Now that's, you know, serial uh, one by one transaction processing. Now, what about parallel? Well, that's basically processing multiple transactions at a time. So you can see that right here. Basically, if lots of people are trying to use the blockchain at a time, it'll just kind of treat them all independently of one another, process them at the same time, and then those will get included into a block. And that's one way that you can scale things. You don't have to wait for one thing to go and then the next thing and the next thing. You can do it all at the same time in order to increase the number of transactions per second. All right, so that's the whole idea is basically increasing the number of transactions and go through with parallel processing. All right, Solana already does this, but say advertisers do it twice as fast as Solana does, You know, hence making it the fastest layer one blockchain on the face of the planet, okay? Now, another thing that Say has going for that Solana doesn't is that they are moving everything to becoming EVM compatible. So what does that mean? Well, basically, you know, EVM just stands for Ethereum Virtual Machine. So that is essentially what Ethereum runs. So if you can write programs for Ethereum and you have these other blockchains like uh, Tron, Binance Smart Chain, uh, you know, Avalanche, they are also EVM compatible. So if you can write smart contracts for Ethereum without really any code changes, you can put those same apps on other blockchains that are EVM compatible. And that is Say's plan. So what are some of the big benefits to this? Well, if you already have an existing Ethereum app, you could just port it over to Say, all right? And then you have a blockchain with rich network effect with apps because the last thing you want to do is get on a new blockchain and have nothing to do. Okay, that's one of the things that makes blockchains valuable is when you can actually, you know, perform tasks on them. And so if you have something that's very compatible with other chains and you can just launch new apps on it really quickly, that's a recipe for a new technology to come out the gate and really gain a lot of traction, you know, pretty much overnight. Rather than having some proprietary programming language where developers have to go learn this stuff and rebuild their apps, okay, it could take a long time for that to catch up. And so that being said, you know, this whole idea of a parallelized Ethereum virtual machine um, is not live just yet, okay? So that's gonna be a part of, say, version two, okay? Which you can see in their announcement here is supposed to go live in the first half of 2024. All right, so let's look at some other quick technical attributes of, say, so that you can understand what sets it apart from other chains. So one is that this is designed to be really niche purpose-built blockchain for financial use cases, okay? I mean, most blockchains really are doing that in the first place, but this basically started out as scaling exchanges and then they kind of generalized to being uh, an alternative layer one uh, blockchain. So it's based on the Cosmos ecosystem uh, with the Cosmos SDK. Uh, the consensus mechanism is going to be, you know, proof of stake. Okay, so people love having a cryptocurrency they can stake and earn passive income. It also has built-in front-running protection uh, to help from things like front-running attacks and also sandwich attacks. All right, now at the beginning of this video, I talked about some big opportunities coming down the pike with a new blockchain like Say. Now, anytime a new layer one pops up like this, there's almost always big opportunities that present themselves. Now, before I talk about any of these, I'm not making anything in this video to be financial advice, okay? Anytime you use new technology, uh, there's always risks associated with this. So with that disclaimer out of the way, uh, let's first talk about you know the Say token itself. So again, this is something that's nearly gone up 10x in price uh, in the last 90 days off of the lows. Uh, a lot of times, you know, when you have these new hot networks come out of the scene, especially in a bull market with no big past prior, you know, price performance that you can watch the token dump, if it looks like it's growing from nothing, that can often generate some big momentum in a bull market, uh, especially if you have a technology that claims to be very fast and a competitor. We saw this, you know, in past bull runs with new layer ones that hit the scene, and it looks like history is repeating itself. We're also going to see uh, different tokens launch, okay, associated with these networks. We've seen uh, the uh, Cyana, I guess that's how I'm saying that, uh, meme coin launched based off the same network. Okay. That did 400% in the last week alone. We're going to see other stuff happen like this, like new DEX launches. It's just kind of one of those things to expect inside of crypto. So on top of that, I would also expect there's going to be many airdrops available on the same network. Okay. This happens anytime there's a new ecosystem because you have all these new apps that launch. Okay. People want to be the first to market. Uh, on these ecosystems and the playbook for dropping a new crypto is to do an airdrop. So basically that's when you have early adopters, new technology that get on the blockchain, start making transactions, they use the applications. Then, you know, whenever those projects launch their tokens, they just give them away to the early adopters of the new technology. And so you can see the ecosystem here. There's all different types of apps that you can look at that are either live now or are going to be live 
which you could do some airdrop hunting on to get yourself in position for one of these. And again, I don't know who's going to do it or how much it's going to be, but this is definitely a resource you could check out for that. And also at the beginning of this video, I talked about how there's going to be some opportunities for developers in this space. And that's why I want to talk about now uh, the $120 million Say Ecosystem Fund. So again, anytime you have a new uh, blockchain like this with basically nothing on top of it, it has to be colonized, okay? And there's always opportunities for developers to come in and, you know, port applications over to Say. And there's a lot of incentive now because they have a $120 million ecosystem fund set aside to incentivize developers to actually build upon this technology. You can uh, check that out and apply for it uh, right here. So it looks like the type form is moved at the time recording this video, but I'm sure you can go back and check on this link on their website and they will update this. We saw this in the past with Solana. They had a huge ecosystem fund. Lots of developers uh, made pretty handsome rewards for launching applications, especially in a bull market. All right, so finally, I'll give you some of my thoughts on this particular technology, okay? So, you know, this video is not a sponsor video. I just make these videos whenever this new stuff pops up because people are talking about it like crazy. I'm an educator and I want you to know about it uh, and also know my honest, unfiltered thoughts about these types of things. So, you know, in terms of what they're trying to do here, uh, the thing that really has to be proven out, in my view, is this parallelization of transactions, okay? Because nobody's really successfully cracked this to my satisfaction just yet, okay? So some people say that sequential or linear execution in blockchain is a feature, not a bug, like how Ethereum does things. In many cases, you need to process transactions in sequence one by one, especially when you're dealing with financial technology, because it, it's an accounting thing, okay? You're talking about a ledger, and that ledger needs to be updated, you know, one by one, so that like if I go send a cryptocurrency and then someone else is doing it, we're not seeing, you know, balances change. And that really comes down more to uh, like DEX trading, for example, if you got lots of people who are trying to say, trade the same currency at the same time, like we need to know who's getting in first. I haven't really seen that, you know, cracked to my liking just yet. So that's the thing that has to be proven out here. Uh, I'm not saying that they haven't done that. Okay, we'll just have to kind of wait and see what that looks like. The other big thing here is when you are improving the scalability of a blockchain like this, um, you always have to take into account the resources that's going to take to run validators. Okay, because that can produce a centralization risks in the network themselves. So one of the big benefits of blockchains is decentralization, right? A network that's distributed across the world with lots of people who are not coordinating with one another necessarily, but have financial incentives to run the network themselves. And, you know, if it was as easy as just like, you know, increasing the block size of every blockchain, we could do that, all right, and make every blockchain super fast. But what would happen is, you know, it would be really expensive to maintain that ledger. So for example, we could make Ethereum, you know, 100,000 transactions per second now if we just said, okay, we're magically just going to let that, you know, happen. But you would basically need a supercomputer in order to process that. And that supercomputer would be so expensive that like nobody's going to be able to actually afford the hardware costs in order to do that. So we'll closely monitor the situation here to see if we need exorbitant uh, hardware costs in order to run these types of blockchains and whether that's going to actually have sufficiently decentralized operations here. So those are my only two things that I want to see, uh, whether those can be truly cracked in this situation. There's other competitors. Uh, I made a video about Monad a couple months ago talking about this same type of strategy. I'm not by any means writing any of this off. I just want to wait and see what happens with their execution here. So the question is, will Say be the one? You let me know in the comment section below. Will it actually be the fastest layer one blockchain of all time? Will it actually outperform these other ones? And once you finish leaving your comment, make sure you smack that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I'll be releasing more videos just like this, keeping you up to date with the hottest technology that's coming out, especially as we enter into this new crypto phase. And if you want to get ahead of this next crypto explosion that's happening right now, the best way to do that is to double down on your technical skills and become a blockchain developer and actually get inside this space because that's where all the opportunities are. All right. And I can show you how to do that step by step from start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You really don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. The next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.